So far, we've been considering uh, problems in which uh, we're looking at transitions from uh, an initial discrete state into a discrete final state. However, there are many problems of practical interest in which the final state of a transition is a continuum of states. This is the case, for example, in the ionization of atoms where uh, we can apply some perturbation to an atom and eject an electron uh, outside of the atom. So it goes out into the continuum of being a free particle. Similarly, uh, in scattering problems, uh, this is often the case where uh, you go from a bound state into uh, a free particle state, which is described by a continuum of states. So what we need is, uh, we need a way to describe this continuum of states. And this is typically done by a quantity known as the density of states, usually denoted by rho of E. And this uh, quantifies the number of states that are accessible per unit energy. Okay. In other words, this says that the number of states with uh, some energy within uh, an interval E and E plus DE is given by dn. So this is the number of states with energy in this interval. So it's given by the density of states times the size of that interval of energy. So uh, what this looks like is you have some discrete initial energy state. And let's say you shine light on it with energy h bar omega, you end up transitioning to uh, a continuum of states, which is uh, essentially a whole bunch of states very, very close together. And this could be of, uh, you know, this interval over here could be your interval DE. So in this case, when we calculate uh, transition probabilities, we now need to uh, sum over all of the possible final states with this energy. So the new uh, transition probabilities now need to take this into account. Okay, so we need to sum over all of the possible states. Since uh, the states form a continuum, so they're basically a continuous variable, this sum is most efficiently computed as an integral over the continuum of final energies. So you have the transition probability from a discrete state to another discrete state. Uh, because the discrete final states are also close together, uh, we need to sum over all of them. And we saw over here that the number of states with, with some energy within DE is given by this. If we wanna do it over the entire continuum, we have to integrate uh, let's say over this entire continuum, which we'll call delta E. So 
So this is, uh, this gives the probability of transition into a continuum and this will be uh, for some final energy EF. You can uh, calculate what this quantity is but we won't be interested in that. At the moment we'll just leave it as uh, this abstract quantity that quantifies the um, how many states of some energy E are within, uh, how, many, there are how many states there are per unit energy. So we'll use this concept uh, with the case of a harmonically oscillating perturbation uh, to see what would happen if we were to shine light on some quantum system and uh, which would result in, for example, a transition from uh, some atomic state into uh, an emission to a continuum. And so in the next video, we'll, uh, we're going to apply this concept to the case of uh, harmonically oscillating perturbation, which we said had taken on the following form. So it's only applied for a duration TF and that oscillates with angular frequency omega. This will lead us eventually to uh, the idea of Fermi's golden rule, which is a hugely important uh, formula that's uh, used in in many areas of, of physics.